It's October the 17th, 2012. This is 508, a show about Worcester. I'm Mike Benedetti. Today on the show also is Jen Burt. You're canning something today. Yeah, chutney. Chutney, fantastic. And Nicole Pasla. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Very well. How are you doing? Very good. Nicole is here to talk about some Worcester news. we got a lot of other stuff going on this week, though. Um, I think the most important story, the most important thing to get to, at least this week on the show, is to talk to these juggalos at the Palladium. Now, Nicole, you know, you're aware of the juggalos. I am movement. very aware of the juggalos, yes. There you go. So, I just want to give people some background, because not everybody knows what this even is. So, there's this rap group of many years now, the Insane Clown Posse. They rap, uh, they have, like, clown makeup on, and they have a lot of fans, and they actually have a lot of people who are also on their record label who do similar kind of music, similar kind of stuff, and... The fans as a whole of all these guys are called the Juggalos, and they also wear the clown makeup. They also have other things that they do as a group. Um, there's a ton of shows by the Insane Clown Posse and by their label mates down at the Palladium in downtown Worcester, and so there's always a ton of Juggalos hanging around the Palladium when these shows are going on. This is sort of an amazing phenomenon in the city of Worcester that I think is underreported. Um, so I went down there and talked to them uh, this past week, because we have mentioned this thing on the show before, and they were cool people, and they were very kind enough to talk to me for the show. Uh, I, there's two pieces, two more pieces of background we should probably get to before cutting to these clips. One is to mention that a, a couple of years ago, maybe it was just last year, uh, the Juggalos were classified by the FBI as a gang, a non-traditional gang. Now, um, recently, the Insane Clown Posse and their lawyers sued the FBI because, saying they're not a gang. And you know how they sue them? Freedom of Information Act violation. <laughs> yes, Freedom of Information Act violation, FBI. They were like, FBI, you tell, give us the information of why you say they're a gang. The FBI is like, and they're just like, we're going to sue you guys. Too bad. So, here they are. Here we got Billy the Kid. Why are you out here today? With that ABK and Blaze show going on. Uh -huh. Juggalo family love, as always. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. How did you get involved in this whole scene? Um, I've been down pretty much most of my life. I've been down since I was six years old. Been six years old? Yeah. How did you find out about this when you were six? Uh, my older cousin put me onto it. He gave my dad a CD. My dad didn't like it so much. I did, and then the rest is kind of history. Uh huh. And what's your what's like? What's your experience being like being like? A... It's just like, you know, I, I grew up in bad neighborhood. You know, rough life, and just when I'm at these shows and I'm around all these all these people, you see the painted faces, the masks, you know, whatever the case. Yeah. It's, it's all love, you know, you come down here and it's just all love, it's a great feeling. My name's Nick. Nick, what, why are you out here on Main Street today? So out here chilling with my family. That's awesome, that's awesome. How did you get involved with this whole thing? Well, when I used to live in Athol, my buddy took and picked me up and says, we're going for a ride. Yeah. Because I had a rough childhood, my buddy goes, we're going for a ride. I go, where? He said, I don't, he said, don't worry about it, I got here. Just ch chilling with everyone. I felt more comfortable with these guys than anybody else. That's awesome. How long have How long have you been uh, part of the Juggalo? I've been down almost uh, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. How old were you when you first got started? I was ten. I want to ask you about this FBI thing. You know about this FBI? Thing? Yeah, I know about it. So I always, because for years now, people always say, "Oh, the FBI says the Juggalos are a gang." And then I saw recently that like the ICP were suing the FBI about this. What is your take on all this? I think that they're doing the right thing because Juggalos are not a gang at all. Mm -hmm. And to put a label as so, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I can't walk into a store without being watched. Mm. When you're wearing the makeup or when you're wearing the I shirt? I'm just wearing or? a shirt that has a hatchman on it. I have a tattoo of a hatchman on my right arm. Uh -huh. I can't walk around at all without being watched. People see that and they say, this guy must be up to no good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, what's your name? The Black Jesus. I talked to you before across the street. Do you remember this? Yes. How you doing, man? Pretty good. What brings you out to Main Street today? To a juggalo event, a family event. Yeah? We're not a gang. We can't understand this thing that we comprehend, but it's all family love that we comprehend. We are a unit as one. Tell me about that thing about family. Family? Yeah. It's everything. Uh -huh. It runs this whole planet. God put us on this earth for something. Yeah. To all connect in one day and get up to heaven. Uh-huh. Hey, Steve. Now, the last, last time I was talking to you, we were talking about religion a little bit. This I'm, is... I'm personally Unitarian okay. slash Buddhist. Okay. But right. the thing is, 
people are people. They pick their religion. Other people pick their religion. Uh huh. We can't. You can't decide on what Yo, faith shit. that you want to like. Like, IC, ICP. There's like they have symbol. Everybody, the jugglers have symbol of messages behind the music. Yes. Yes. People get scared because the swears on the shirts and then the swear the clowns on their on the thing. And then look, juggalo. It's original. Who knows? Yeah. It's like the deadheads of the new generation. Exactly. Yeah. Do you, feel, do you feel? I mean, do you feel like there's like a philosophical or religious like trend among the jugglers? Do you feel like people are like expected to it's, have something like that if they come into the thing here? It's basically like a unit. Like everybody is one. When everybody's event, yeah. Everybody shows up to an event. Uh-huh. Everybody is one. Everybody is humble to be at ease. Mm. We're getting away from all the stress that we have back home. We're here as one. People are not judging you. People are not dividing you. People judge us every day. So it don't work. But are they judging you here? No. Everybody, like, I'm black and white. If you make fun of me, you can make fun of my white hat or my black hat. I don't care. That's why we symbolize black and white face paint unity. Yin yang. What's, what's your name, man? Giggles the Killer Clown. Giggles, why are you on Main Street today? Here. Yeah. Concert. Family. Woo! 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 I love that. What, do, what, do, what can you tell me about Whoop Whoop? This is like the most uh, famous whoop, thing whoop. in the juggle. We are what? We are losers! That's rude. That's really yeah, rude. That's really oh, nice. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking crap about you. What the? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. What was that about? Haters. People don't understand us. They don't understand the lifestyle. Yeah. That's how it is. That's exactly what Blake was talking about. And then they, they don't, don't have a better comeback. But, uh, they're exactly that. They're haters. They don't care. Mm. But, uh, whoop, whoop. It's like, for whoop, whoop, for all of us, it's like saying, what up to the next ninja? Or ninja yeah. around. Yeah. You know, that's how it is. Yeah. Let me, how did you get involved with this whole thing? Um, a friend of mine from high school introduced me to ICP, didn't know who they were, uh -huh. and from there on, I've, I've been down since, uh, since... Wait a second, this guy, what, all right, anyway. <laughs> I have, I've been down since the Wraith dropped. Like, what, what part of your life is all this? Um, there is, everything's part, it's all part of my life. Whenever yeah. I go to work, stay at home, go out with my friends, my homies, everything. Yeah. You know, wherever I go, you know, I don't have my chain, I forgot it at home, right. but, you know, if I'm out, yeah, I'll be rocking my chain, I'll be rocking this shirt. Honestly, I honestly don't give a care what people say about me anymore, because honestly, everyone's going to judge. Yeah, we say we judge, it's human nature. Yeah. So, um, we judge, we judge, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. The police... You know, the, the police judge us. Look at the FBI naming us a ga as a gang. You know, yeah. they judged us instantly because, you know, look at the Crips and the Bloods, MS-13, all those actual gangs. Right. You know, they're getting away with shit that we don't even do. They're getting away, getting away with shit that we don't even do, and right. yet we're getting called out on shit. Right. So that's how it is. You lose! Nicole, how are you doing? Very well, Mike. Nicole, did you see the show of a couple months ago where, where uh, Jen was messing around with bees? I've seen all of your shows. <laughs> well, this week, Jen, you took the beehive apart. I did. Oh, this part of it. And here it is in the same kitchen, the exciting yeah. action footage. <laughs> this is your beehive. <laughs> yes. Is, you just like grabbed this off the top of the thing, <laughs> ran inside, and get stung. How long has the, have the bees been working on this? Well... They've been in there since April. I think I put this on in like oh, the end of August. Yeah. So this is like a couple the end of months. August. No. Oh, no, it's before August. that. Cause it was like, the beginning of August. Yeah. Well, like yeah. three months. Three months. Three months of work. It's incredible. I know. It's this honeycomb. Magic. What? So now, what happens to these uh, these co these honeycombs? I'm gonna cut it out. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, yeah. Some of it we'll just cut out, and you can have like cut comb honey. Okay. Like that's just like you just like chew on a chunk. You just chew on it. it, and another thing, I want to try a couple of different extraction methods. Okay. I want to put it in it, which is basically because like, with this kind you can't just like put it in a spinner like okay. with the frames. So you can we can smush it into a colander, mm -hmm. or <laughs> we can put it in a one mason jar, let it cheesecloth over it, flip it over, and it drains it out. So, I love it. <clears throat> also this week. The sign of the Paris Cinema was auctioned off. The auctioneer was city manager Michael O'Brien. The beneficiary was Preservation Worcester. And the winner was Gus Giordano. 
We're here with Brendan Mellican at Which the Paris Cinema own, Sign. Sadly, you lost this at auction today. I did lose it. Well, that's not the right way to look look at it. There, uh-huh. there were two active bidders, I think, for, for this sign, and both of us had, at the end of the day, the intention of making sure that this stayed something visible in the city of Worcester. Yes. And the winning bidder intends to do just that, make it visible. Uh, from what I understand, they want to put it in Union Station. Okay. Um, as part of a restaurant that, that's currently there. Mm-hmm. That's that's great. As long as it's something that isn't lost to time, so be it. But still sad that we uh, we went all in and we were not a, we're not able to walk away successfully. You bid thirty three hundred dollars. The other guy thirty four hundred dollars. That was it. That was it. That's that's. But now the Power Cinema has a price tag attached to it, and that too I think is worth something at the end of the day. We have three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. We have three thousand. Also this week, you let skating rink downtown. I, I, which one? <laughs> the one without ice. The one without the one without ice. The one with the rink but without ice. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> it has also been in the news this week. Let's go downtown and take a look. If you want to make the case that Worcester is stupid, a great symbol of that argument is the patio behind Worcester City Hall here on the Commons. It was uh, opened up three years ago. Originally, this area had been landscaped with trees and grass as part of the re-landscaping of the common. But then, mysteriously to many onlookers, they ripped all that out and put in this concrete area. Now, in the summer, this is a nice uh, patio. They have chairs, they have tables. People sit out here during the week and eat lunch. Uh, People hang out here during the weekend also. Uh, During the wintertime, the intention has always been for this to be an ice rink, and they do, in fact, seal it off with little plexiglass things and whatever, but they've never been able to find the money to fire it up as an ice rink. The estimate, most recent estimate, the Telegram Exeter has been reporting is $125,000 for a winter of ice skating back here. Uh, However, the Telegram now has anonymous people as of last week saying that because the uh, cooling system for City Hall was redone um, with a refrigeration unit that not only could provide cold air for City Hall in the summer, but could provide ice for this sucker in the winter. This could be the winner for it to happen, and that uh, these are the same anonymous sources saying that business and education leaders locally have been behind the scenes getting ready to pony up some money so that the city actually might not even have to pay for the ice rink to be an ice rink. This has been something that we've talked about this show for years. I am very excited at the idea that one day there could be ice skating back here, even if not this winter, maybe some winter before the common is re-landscaped again. So, Nicole, as I understand it, the critical part of this fund... Hey! <laughs> would you like to hear about this book from the HX Library? What's it called, Shane? It's called <laughs> Report from Planet Midnight. It's by Nalo Hopkinson. And it's like these two short stories and a speech and an interview. 
And usually the short stories in these books are way better, but this time the interview and the essays are way better. There's a, there's a story about a kid with a big head, and there's some story about Caliban that I don't understand. What's going on in the interview? What, like, what kind of people are going to want to read this book? People that are obsessed with science fiction and who read lots of Racialicious. <laughs> <laughs> so if you read the blog Racialicious... Or if you're just interested in race and, like, gender and science fiction. It's definitely an awesome, like, usually you're like, okay, I just read this interview, what do I get from this? But this is like, ah, I got so much from this, this is a badass. What's the book again? It is? Report from Planet Midnight. Thanks, Shane, that's fantastic. All right, bye. (laughs) Nicole, I want to ask you about CDCs, Community Development Corporations. This is a big thing that's been going on. It is. What is is the story here? So uh, the latest news is that there was a gentleman named Gabriel Cortez who worked for... um, the Oak Hill CDC and the South Worcester Neighborhood Improvement Improvement Corporation. Corporation. And so he was a, um, he he did work for them and um, he was recently convicted of uh, bribery. Accepting bribes. Accepting bribes, correct. Soliciting and accepting bribes. Soliciting. And witness tampering. Witness tampering. Yes. Kind of like a juggalo. I'm going to take umbrage on behalf of the juggalos. (laughs) Because I don't know anything about anybody, any juggalo tampering with a witness. Yeah, that was, that was, that, that was low. I, apology, I apologize All to right. the juggalos and juggalettes. Okay. Thanks, um, Nicole. All right. <laughs> and so, so anyway, so this gentleman was recently sentenced to 27 months in prison. Mm-hmm. And um, it's part of a larger probe, it seems, into what exactly is going on with federal funds that have made their way to the CDC's in the city of Worcester. Right. So this gentleman, Mr. Cortez, seems to have had some sort of relationship with Jackie Vashon Jackson, mm-hmm. who was the um, the former director of housing and something or other for the city. Okay. And she was recently placed on leave, may even have been fired as a result. And there were a few other financial irregularities going on with her. Right. And... Um, and so right now what's going on is that there's some sort of HUD audit of um, these federal funds that were supposed to be directed to help low and moderate income people. And um, th- there's a question about whether it actually got to them. So the city gets money from the federal government. Mm-hmm. They provide grants to the CDCs mostly for to develop housing for right. low and moderate income folks. And the question is whether the CDCs have been doing that. So the okay. CDCs requested CDCs provide them backup, and depending on whether the CDCs can provide them with that backup, the federal government may take money away. Mm, okay. So, yeah. Okay. So that's where we are now. That seems like where we're at. And do we know it? We don't know anything more than that. I don't. Maybe someone else does. Okay. So this is kind of, is this, okay. <laughs> that was a nice summary of the situation, I guess. I guess one thing I want to say is, like, I really want to talk about this more on the show. I really want to have someone who has, like, an expertise in this area talk about this on the show, because you don't have expertise in this. I have no expertise I don't have in expertise area. in this. I would say that there are probably politicians and pundits in the city of Worcester who can speak in more detail than we can speak, but who are not experts in this area. Correct. So I would be super interested, if anybody wants to come on and talk about it more from that perspective, that they should do that. Uh, I saw I saw a nice tweet from Andy Lacombe today about the city's bond status. Did you see this? Um, I didn't. Yeah, the uh, the Standard and Poor's have upgraded the city's bond rating from A minus to A plus, and Moody's has upgraded it from A one to A A three. Was that as a result of their YouTube video? <laughs> I I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. This is just this is what happens when you follow Andy Lacombe. <laughs> you find out more information than you can even process. That's my experience. So good job. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anything else going on with it this week? Jen, do you got something you think going on? I'm giving a canning workshop on Saturday. You at, are? Yeah, the farmer's market. I don't know what time, though. Where's the farmer's Sometime market? Sometime between 10 and 2. That's the one down at the Y? At the Y. There's other workshops happening, too. It's uh, food day. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Do you know what the other workshops are? Uh, different gardening things. <laughs> Gardening. Food related food things. things. Canning, probably some canning <laughs> How to workshops. Get your fall garden, putting your garden to bed, I think. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, that's all I get. Give us, a, give us a quick little demo here. Okay. Give us, like a, give us a little two-minute two summary. Two-minute summary. This is a thing where it's like, we got this food, we want to keep it for the winter, it's perishable. 
We don't got to put it in the freezer. We're going to stick yeah. it in a jar. So this is chutney, apple, green tomato chutney, a bunch of different spices. We cooked this down for like, I don't know, 45 minutes. All right. You sanitize the jars. Okay. Hot water. In the hot water. Okay. And then you sanitize anything else you're touching, basically. Just steam. But steam, yeah. <laughs> then you, you fill it up. Hopefully not too much like I just did. Mm -hmm. And you stick on these little lids. Mm -hmm. Put it back in that thing. And then boil it for some more time. Okay. Depending on how, like, this is going in for 10 minutes. Other things you might shoot for like half an hour. Depends on the thing. And you can Google this stuff and yeah. find out more information. There's a good National Center for uh, Food Preservation, I think it's called. Sweet. They, they got all the safety know-how thing. Speaking of preservation, Worcester. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Preservation. This is awesome. <laughs> what else have you made this year? You made, we got, we, we, got, got, we got stuff over here. We got the, we got the pickles, pickles. Yeah. Some kind of a pickle. This green tomato pickle. Green tomato pickle. Some salsa. This yeah. is all the honey all with the all honey. the bits of wax <laughs> from our crude honey extraction mm -hmm. floated to the top in these jars. Uh, here's a thing of uh, ginger. ground ginger that somehow is over here. This is very impressive. I love this stuff. <laughs> I love so. Well, people can check yeah. it out. People can go down and uh, and check it out. I love that you're making so much. I feel like people put the money in and put the, and you know they uh. you buy the equipment and then you're like, is this even worth it at the end of the day? But it's like, especially this time of year, you can get like gets potentially you can get produce pretty cheap. Yeah, and it's not hot out anymore. When so I was doing this in uh, August, it was horrible. It's a work. Now you're like heating the house. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant, <laughs> Jen Burt, ladies and gentlemen. Nicole Apostle, also here on the show today. I'm Michael Benedetti. This is the Five Away Show. It's a show about Worcester. Pie and coffee at gmail.com is the email address. If you've got information about HUD, if you're a juggalo who wants to be on the show or who wants to tell us that we're getting it all wrong, you email us. If you got some canning tips, email us. We'll talk to you next week. Oh, there it is. There you go. Juggalo juice, motherfucker.